Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another uh, review for Halloween month and back on reviewing the Final Destination film series. Now we move on to the third one, Final Destination 3, released in 2006. Um, this is the half of year, the two disc Thrill Ride edition. <laughs> so... Final Destination 3, ISA, I did not care for this one. I mean, I enjoyed the first two ones. This one I did not care for. But I'm not fully mad at, but I'm not fully mad at the movie. The fourth one, the fi the next one, the fourth one, the Final Destination, the, the Final Destination, I hate. That's the worst of the franchise. And then when I get to the fifth one... Which I say I liked better. I think that I, I like the fifth one better than number three and four. But um, so that's why it's not gonna be. It's not a full on. This one's not a full on rant. I just did not care for this one. But it, it's too bad because you know you have James Wan who directed the first Final Destination comes back. He comes back to direct it along with him and Glenn Mor Glenn Morgan who produced and wrote the movie come they they come back together and direct this third one um the fourth the, the third one um it, it has a lower rating on than both the films on IMDb as a 5.8 it has a 43% Rotten Tomatoes which is lower than the first than the second film but a bit higher than the first one so like I say it's in the middle but um I still say I didn't I didn't I didn't care for this one though but Although it did make some money, though, more than the second film, because the second film made ninety million, and a bit more, and a bit more than the first film. But uh, <laughs> a little bird there feels like I want to burp on this film, but I'm not. But I'm not fully mad at the movie. I just did, just did not care for the this third one. But uh, it is it's just, it's for, the, for the new cast of characters, which honestly I did not care for. I mean, it's, it's, but the, your lead is the character Wendy, played by, really enough, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, you know, who play who goes to play John McClane's daughter in the fourth one, Live Free or Die Hard. I know she was in the she was in the theme prequel, the 2011 th the thing prequel. She was her acting acting wise was not the problem. It's just that. Well, I ranted on. I fully ranted on the film long, years ago. I hate the theme prequel. I know in the, the film she starred in, of course, like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and then, well, of course, earlier this year we starred in, um, in, Har in Harley Quinn's movie Birds of Prey. But I, I thought I had to be just be. I, know, I would say. Her, her acting in this film was not the problem. I thought she did she did what what she had to do. I thought she was fine, to be honest. The, for for the, for the other characters, I just didn't care for. I just didn't care for the other characters. I mean, the story is goes on, so it falls on this where you have, um, like. High school, high, uh, high school student, uh, uh, played, by, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and and some other group, another group of high school students, and they go on the roller coaster. Was what was it called? The Devil's Ride, I think it was. I thought uh, it's, it's some kind of it was yeah it was, no it's called the Devil's Flight. It's a roller coaster, and. When they get on, Mary Elizabeth Winston has a premonition about everyone dying on the roller coaster. She panics. Some people get off it, except for her character's uh, boyfriend. Which, I really enough, that character uh, who plays the boyfriend, um, I, I I forget the guy's name though, but he was in Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. He was later going to star in Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. He was the the guy who um. He was the lead college student who believed that that Tucker and Dale were evil hillbillies, you know. And you know, before he gets, you know, 
at the end, he gets burned in the fire and with his inhaler, and he falls out the window. Yeah, that was him. You uh, later going and start in Tucker Dale vs. Evil, so. I was like, okay, yeah. And I like Tucker and Dale vs. I love Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. It's a very fun, funny horror comedy. I, I highly enjoy that film. Um. Actually, really enough, it's speaking with Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, another one of the character, one of the actresses is also stars in that film. Um. Is that is there's one of the, the um, one of the, it's one, she was she played one of the girls that her and the uh, other other friend were in the tanning booth and they go both get burned to death. Yeah, but I, I forget there I also forget her, na forget her name, but she was also the one and also starting Tucker Nail vs. Evil. She's the one who always gets the blood spattering all in her face and trying to smoke a cigarette. Yeah. So yeah, two two characters were going starting Tucker Nail vs. Evil. Funny enough. But uh, but but Mary Liz was, was said the, the guy from Tucker Dale vs Evil he stays in the roller coaster the rest of people uh, get off and then of course the whole thing happens like in the the previous two films the permission comes true and the, the remaining the remaining people on the roller coaster dies and then of course they have to reference Fly 180 as well and there's also a picture of um they reference the second film as well with a picture of the, on the newspaper of the highway crash uh. Of the highway, the crash on the highway, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, she, um, you know, at first didn't believe it, but then she believes it because she all the, the pictures, she all the pictures she took while in the theme park is probably in, um, an inclination that um, a future death for one of the characters, depending on how they are when their pictures were taken. But um, but the whole thing, though, I mean. Like I said, I did I, for the whole all the care all these characters I did not care about. I mean, even the premonition of the um the roller coaster, which at first it's like oh, okay, it's on a roller coaster, but at the same time, this premonition I just did not care for either. I mean, nothing can nothing can be the, the craziness of the highway sequence in in the second film. I mean, it's nothing. It's no, the, the the roller coaster premonition was nothing to it, and all I have to say, I'll, probably I'll take take I say it's better than the premonition of the NASCAR one, in the fourth one. Probably, probably because you know the fourth one is just a, a bad, is all bad CGI. So, but this is but at the same time, this one I just didn't I, the premonition on the roller coaster I just didn't care for, and most of the characters I, the characters I not, I did not like either but shortly after that um they go the, 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 go the drive um Mary Liz was with another and another guy named Kevin uh who's the guy that's played by uh Ray, Ryan Merriman yeah right which actually oh okay that's what I thought it was <laughs> and when I re referenced in um the prep the in when I mentioned in the second film how the institution was used uh, prior in the previous year of Halloween Resurrection. Speaking of Halloween Resurrection, again, um, the the lead, the lead guy Kevin who was with Mary Elizabeth Winstead. That's the guy who plays uh, Deckard in also in Halloween Resurrection. You know the the guy who um the lead the lead girl. You know who's like kind of like online dating. She you know in the in the well in my, Michael Myers' house. She was um getting the phone the phone. And Decker was help. It was helping her, typing whatever it is on the phone. That's the guy who was, um, yeah, plays uh, Deckard in, yeah, in Halloween Resurrection. <laughs> so okay, okay, that, oh, oh yeah, that was the guy from Halloween Resurrection. Um, the character Deckard. So, but they're they're in a drive through, and then also there's this runaway car, coming down the hill, and there's a, a truck that's on this, on Mary Elizabeth Winston's passenger side. So they can't get out, and the car in front of them won't move. So they get to the gals with the windshield. They get out in time, but then, okay, some of the, but some of the, most of the characters I not care for though. But there was a couple of cool deaths. I would say I'll gi I'll give credit to this film that there was a couple of deaths I did uh, that was that was pretty cool looking. So when one of the crash cars into their truck they're in, it causes the engine to pop out, and like the fan base on the engine comes up and hits the guy on the head, the back of the head. Which that was one of the guys that would, that died in the crash. What was the character name? Um, 
was it? I think it was yeah, it was Frank. Yeah. Because there was a there was a picture of the guy, and there was like a fan right next to him, like right here. So that's probably indicating he died from a fan. And then there was a fan right there on the engine. And like I said, and then you then you saw what well, was before that the two girls, the one girl from Tuck and Dale was evil. Um, they were in the tan, in the tanning booth, like some so like. I don't say how th things on a flat surface can just well, it can it probably can go on a flat surface. Can water can move though, but. Uh, one had a slurpy and it, just, it was water, dripping water, got into the, the electrical system and a piece of board falls right between the tan booths and they both can't get out. So they eventually they start burning to death. They burn to death. And then later on when um, the two, uh, the characters of Wendy and Kevin, they talk to another guy who the guy who was a cocky, arrogant oh, prick basically, played by Texas Battle. Which actually, that's another uh, guy I recognize because the guy who was a guy named Lewis, who was a like once he was working out with a, being a football player. Texas, the guy named Texas Battle, he will also star in the sequel of um, Wrong Turn Two, which actually he survived in that movie really enough. You know, Wrong Turn Two, Wrong Turn Two, her and also the the lead girl as well. They both survived the cannibal. The cannibal fam, the cannibal family. So they drive away in that Ferrari, and I was like, "Nice car." Do you mind taking it? Why not? It's at least that this fucked up family owes us, and they both drive off away happily. So yeah, him, yeah, he he survived. He, I think, yeah, Wrong Turn Two came out in two thousand seven. This was two thousand six. So he survives in that movie, but on this, because he's you know, you know, they're telling him about death and all that, and he's like, "Oh, whatever, fuck death and all that." And he's working on this whole thing, and then. Which they thought the swords would kill him, but actually, I cut a piece of wire on the thing, and he just goes ah, and then just go <laughs> pet splatter. Which uh, that death had to, had to, just had to make me laugh. I mean, it didn't make me laugh because it was it was funny intentionally. This is how it unatten it unintentionally made it funny. It was like like ah, and then <laughs> just head splattered, pops like a balloon. But I, that death I didn't care for. I mean, the one with the, the engine in the guy's head was better. And then, or when later on the the hardware store, which kind of reminds me, say it was like a Home Depot type of store, where one girl, um, one of the girls, um, it started. There was a whole thing of a chain effect in the, of, of a bunch of hardware stuff falling down, and the one girl falls back, and she gets like nailed gun to the back of the head, and her and her hand are like nailed together. So that, that was another cool looking, it was another cool looking, she gets nailed like this. So between the guy, Frank, who got his head hit by the engine, and the girl, um, Aaron, that was the character's name, Aaron, who got nail gun with the hand to the face as well. To me, that's like the two of the best, the best deaths in the film. But then the other guy named, um, Ian, look at this guy's name. He was in Ginger Snaps. I didn't care for that. Um, Chris L uh, Lemish. He was in. He was in the Frankenstein Theory. I think that was a. I remember was a found footage movie. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, he was the. He was he. He was an episode of Goose. Of course, well, all these all these characters, you know, from the, all these characters, you know, see from Goosebumps. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Goosebumps. Yeah, he was. He was. In, he played the character Sticks in. The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. Yeah, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, Sticks. <laughs> um. And so he was he was in Goosebumps. The gap the episode. Yeah. So. Uh. Well, yeah, a lot of these characters are Canadian because hey, Goosebumps was a, Goosebumps was a Canadian show. So you see a lot of these Canadian actors starting in horror films like this. A couple of them were in. The Final Destination movies, then and Freddy vs. Jason as well. I mentioned Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, the one girl, the one girl who was starring. Um, it came from beneath the sink, and then the other girl was the character. Um, you know, who was always getting high, and Freddy vs. Jason got a bit possessed by Freddy. He was also in Goosebumps as well, and he was the character Evan in the Monster Blood episodes. So you got these guys around this time. You got these kid characters from Goosebumps starring in horror movies like this. <laughs> Final, Des Final Destination and um, Freddy vs. Jason. So, 
Okay. But with 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 Chris uh, Lemish's character as Ian McKinley, they're at the um you know the bison or the the bicentennial carnival or whatever. Like he's the one who's supposed to cause Mary Elizabeth Winston's uh, death, and he's standing in front of some from some fireworks blowing his face, but it misses him, and then this big thing comes down on him, and then like a as soon as, as soon as it smashes on him, like a piece of his like the rest of his main up here torso or whatever just slips to the side. I'm like, mm. I think they wanted. I think they wanted to do that practically, but I think they CGI'd. They CGI'd it. CGI'd it. I think. I mean, some of the de the deaths in Final Destination Two were were some of them were practical as well. Were pra more practical. I mean, the one the kid felt got crushed by the um, window pane, and or the mother got her head decapitated. Or the character Rory, I think that a little bit was practical, but with a little bit of CG enhancement though. But still, that was a cool death as well. And the thing that everything is, everything, um, the characters, um, Wendy, Kevin, and uh, Wendy's uh, sister, they they survive. They they're like the, the survivors. And then it's like months later, they're on a subway train. Although you, although I mentioned Tony Todd. Well, you don't see his character come back as, uh, what was it, Bloodworth? Bloodworth. You hear his voice. You only hear his voice in this. Tony Todd, like, he voiced, um, the, the voice in, um, the Devil's, uh, Ride attraction. And then you hear his voice on the subway. Like, the next stop is the end of the line. So. I guess, I guess that is more his indication of his voice as the Devil, I guess, but... I mean, this is why. I mean, you didn't have probably didn't part me. Didn't you didn't need to bring his voice into this? But you know, try to keep in touch, I guess. But then he gets, like I said, in this one here, there in this film there are no survivors because unlike the previous two films, where yeah, characters who survived at the end of the movie, but then later each one goes, they die. They die either way. So, but here in this movie, there is no survivors in this. <clears throat> Because Mary Elizabeth Winston gets another premonition, they all die in the subway track, the subway crash. But it actually comes true because it's happening. Then it cuts the cuts to black, which indicated they died anyway. So, yeah, like I said, they they decided like, okay, nobody nobody in this whole franchise lives. So it makes the first two films, the characters each one survive at the end, pointless because, like I said. They just made this, this this formula that it doesn't matter if they beat death or not, they still die anyway. It doesn't matter how smart you try to out, out it doesn't matter how much you try to outsmart death. It doesn't matter, so but here they just they made this with no survivors, so and same thing with the other ones, so <sighs> yeah, this is why this one I I just did not care I just did not care for Final Destination three. So you get a couple of cool deaths, like the one with the, the character of Aaron, she gets nail gun to the face, or the character of Frankie when he gets an engine to the back of his head. That's pretty much about it. The one with the two girls with the tanning booth, so-so, Ian's, Ian's character getting crushed by a sign, the way that the body moves a little bit, or, oh, I forgot to mention, another girl got impaled by a flagpole, by a horse, from a cost by a horse, eh. Um, what other character? Um, Texas Battle. His death was uh, laughable when it's like, ah, oh, then his head gets pop pops like a balloon. So, yeah, this this is like a kid. Plus, like characters, I just did not care for. I mean, I cared a little bit some of the characters in the first two films. But here, there's like even Mary Elizabeth Winston's character. I mean, acting wise, she was not bad, but her character herself was. Eh. Or the guy um, who played Decker from Halloween Resurrection. Eh. So yeah, the characters all just did not care for in this film, and the whole the permission of the roller coaster was, I didn't care for either. So I'm not fully mad. I mean, because it's just, it's definitely a step down, considering that it's James Wan directing as well with Glenn Morgan and him, the right wrote and produced together. It's a step down for me from the first, compared to the first film. The first film it was fun, you know, with the premonition win and everything. Such our lead guy Devin Sawa's character was like burning up in the plane crash and giving the indication how 
death was in that film, but yeah, this is too bad. It's like the first film with Glenn with with James Wan, Glenn Morgan. The first film they did a good job. Then they come back for the third film, step down. David David Arles, who directed the second film, fun film, best one in the franchise to me. And then when he comes back to direct the fourth film, and it's the worst one in the franchise, in my opinion, it's, it's the worst franchise. He said that's a huge step down in what he did in the second for the compared to the second film. So, so each one of these directors come back for a direct to each one. The one is a good one, one's a good one, one's a step, step down, then a big step down. <laughs> but yeah. So Final Destination 3, I'm not much to go, go more into, so I just did not care for Final Destination 3. Yeah, this is not me going any, no use going any further than that. But yeah. So this is my little thought. This is my thoughts on Final Destination, Final Destination 3. It's not. It's not. A, it wasn't a full on rant. I wasn't fully mad at the movie. Well, I will be when I get to the when I get to the second to, to the to the next one, the fourth one. That's the worst. Like I said, in my opinion, it's the worst one of the franchise. But Final Destination, Final Destination 3. Step down. Didn't care for. Thanks for watching. Then stay tuned for a, a, a much more better, um, a bigger rant. I would say on the f the fourth one, the fine, which is called the final destination. Later.